Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it today. Hey, I'm still out traveling and uh, at a hotel right now. I just wanted to uh, drop you a little bit of information that I saw come across uh, one of the news feeds. And the, the headline here is regarding the budget uh, proposal and potential budget cuts uh, that are coming, uh, you know, bubbling around. So the headline is, more than 50 House Republicans tear into VA secretary over debt bill claims. So I wanted to read into that, kind of hear what's going on. Give me a thumbs up, uh, share, with, uh, share with friends, and uh, let's jump into it here. So the, he the headline again was, more than 50 House Republicans tear into VA secretary over debt bill claims. And the story goes, a group of 56 House Republicans tore into the Secretary of the Veterans Affairs for his department's assertions that the GOP's debt ceiling increase in spending cuts would slash veterans' benefits. In a Thursday letter led by uh, Representative Jen Kiggins, a Navy veteran from a military family, Republicans said the secretary's claims are dishonest and shameless. The intent of the, of the legislation is to set a top line number for the entire federal budget. The group wrote in a letter shared with The Hill. They added that top congressional leaders have stated unequivocally that veterans will be protected and the VA will be funded. Many, many members of Congress are deeply troubled and, and personally offended that the Biden administration continues to use these dishonest talking points to create panic and fear in our veteran populations. The letter said, accusing the department of playing political games. Republicans limit, save, grow act paired a debt ceiling increase of 1.5 trillion with a swatch of policy priorities and spending reductions that the Congressional Budget Office estimated would reduce the federal deficit by about $4.8 trillion over a decade. The GOP legislation was intended as a way to bring President Biden to the table to negotiate on spending cuts as a condition of raising the debt ceiling and not necessarily a final product. Biden has called on Congress to pass a clean increase without conditions. Included in the GOP bill is a cap of discretionary spending in line with fiscal 2022 levels overall, while allowing for a 1% growth per year going forward. The White House said that if Republicans do not cut defense spending, the fiscal 22 level would amount to a 22% cut across uh, other discretionary spending. The VA, in a press release last week, warned the bill, and this is what everybody's been talking about. The VA, this is important, the VA, in a press release last week, warned the bill could amount to a loss of jobs across the VA, longer wait times, reduced telehealth access, and more. The VA secretary also said in a Senate hearing that the bill may result in 30 million fewer outpatient visits leading to fewer cancer screenings, mental health screenings, and substance abuse disorder treatments. Those assertions enraged Republicans who have repeatedly said that they will not cut veterans' benefits. The legislation does not make any spending, any specific cuts to veteran benefits or defense, but it also does not specify specifically protect them, though leaders have pledged to do so as they pass funding bills later this year. Actual funding levels will be set during the appropriations process. So again, the call to action here is, look, fine, it's a lot of lip service whether you're going to say that you're going to protect us, not protect us, that we're protected, not protected, whatever, whatever. The bottom line is, is put it in writing, VA will not be touched, veterans benefits will not be touched, and there should be the um, the ongoing number that we need to facilitate the things that we need with all the PACT Act stuff coming through, more people coming in for claims, more people coming in for access, more people getting enrolled into VA health care, uh, the more that they're going to need resources. 
uh, and I will tell you that the doctors on the VHA side are underpaid compared to the civilian side, so that's why they're always short-staffed on doctors and nurses. So something to think about. Now let's go ahead and move on. A Washington Post fact check published Thursday said the White House conjured up, let's start again, a Washington Post fact check published Thursday said the White House conjured up numbers on cuts for veterans benefits, but it is said that Republicans have not confronted the political um, perilous choices uh, they will have to make on spending cuts under their proposed plan in order to avoid impacting veterans. The VA did not comment on this story. So again, what we're looking at here is a proposal, now that it's all coming together, right, because nobody had time to read 184 pages or whatever the, whatever the um, uh, proposal was. The bottom line is, is now that the dust is starting to clear a little bit, it appears as though it is a proposal of a 22 percent cut across the federal government and then a rollback on the discretionary or what have you to the 2022 levels and what what is being translated is essentially every department and and I'm kind of taking bits and pieces from different spots we heard somewhere else that the DOD was carved down of that so if the DOD is carved down of it and then the rest is going to realize a cut, and then they apply that cut evenly, uh, then you're looking, in this case, the numbers that are being used are that 22%. Uh, but there's nowhere, according to the things that we've read now, there's nowhere in the proposal where it says cut veterans' benefits or cut the VA's budget by 22%. And... I think that that's an important note, right? So who who's going to make the call if there if this does come to um, reality, right? Where there is a cut, a substantial cut or drawback or whatever you want to call it, um, what departments are cut, right? What what departments will realize it? I know that when I worked in uh, government, that not every department is treated the same. Every department has its own unique situations and its own struggles in some cases, and the cuts might not apply if the head of that department can articulate it enough and, and there's enough uh, support uh, within the, the, the constituency. So uh, in, anyway, it's important to, to know what's going on, and this is where we're at now. So uh, shots, are, shots are definitely being fired back. So let's see what happens. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate you. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.